That has got to be one of the best views of any Grand Prix track. Well, there's nothing like it. Amazing. I came first here mid-70s. It hasn't lost any of the charisma or the attraction. This is one of those must-do-before-you-die things, isn't it? Sir Jordan, allow me to help you from the back of the car. Oh, Eddie, this is good. This is very good. Boys, where did it all go wrong? The nightlife, Monaco was something really special, almost as special as the race. The atmosphere, just feel it. It's alive right now, isn't it? There's electricity in the air. I love this. I mean, if you're a Grand Prix fan, you can come and you can park your car at the swimming pool chicane. You can have a beer at Rascas. You can have dinner at Tabac. I mean, look at this. These guys are standing on a Grand Prix circuit hours before Formula One cars are flying around here. It's amazing. Welcome to the best hotel in the world, 2011. Yeah, that must be some feat. Yeah, it's also quite expensive, so the drinks are on you. Is that OK? Why do we have to stand so close? I quite like it. I think this place retains its connection to motorsport because so many drivers live here. That's a good point. There have been many of the drivers living here over the years. Michael Schumacher lived here at the beginning of his career. You have Robert Kubica lives here, Nico Rosberg, Felipe Massa. Of all the Grand Prix, this is the one the drivers would love to have in the CV because of the history of this place, because there's something special about a street track. We've sampled what's known as the best hotel in the world. How about we go to one of the most famous next? Gentlemen, this is where I wanted to bring you to. Hotel de Paris. Is there any finer view in motor racing? Do you know what? I really don't think there is. If you didn't have Monaco on the calendar, I think motor racing will be a sorrier place. There's absolutely for sure. The Monaco Grand Prix will be here long after we've gone. There is nothing else like it. 